Hi, I'm Erin and I'm the Senior Media Executive at SPC and today I'm joined by Dean. So Dean, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Nice to meet you, Erin. Nice to meet you as well. Um, so do you just want to give us a little brief introduction to yourself? Um, all right, so I'm with Wizard as the COO, Chief Operations Officer, and I'm heading up all of the studio operations, product design, etc. I'm based out of Slovenia, working remotely from Slovenia. Well, I mean, thank you for taking the time to talk to us anyway. Um, and, you know, you kind of briefly touched upon your role there, but can you tell us a little bit more about what your role entails kind of day to day? I cover all of studio operations. Uh, we have two studios at the moment, one in India and the other in Bulgaria. I also look after all of product, uh, game design and the roadmap, ensuring that we we have a competitive product and, of course, uh, game design concepting and approval. So quite a broad scope in terms of operations and product. I had a little bit of a look at your LinkedIn kind of before we did this interview. Um, you've got kind of quite a really interesting background. So how were your previous experiences shape the operational strategy at Wizard Games? It was quite awesome, to be honest with you, because I worked for some really good companies um, and some really, really creative people. Uh, found some really good uh, mentors and uh, learnings along the way. And I think with with all of this taken into consideration, um, Wizard has allowed me to make significant changes to the processes, the ways of working, uh, the improved communication. And, you know, in testament of all of the above, uh, we've already seen significant improvements in operational efficiency, um, roughly about 40% uh, year to date. But of course, we still have room for further improvement. Yeah, and that's impressive. We, we, we have a really good team. Um, and, you know, we, we're just constantly building up on our capabilities. How is this kind of team helping Wizards stand out in such a saturated market? Because, you know, there are so many different companies now, so it must be quite difficult to kind of make yourself stand out from the competition. With the ongoing operational improvements uh, driving towards further efficiency, uh, the, the intention is that we'll allow ourselves more room for creativity. Uh, this in turn allows us to focus more on uh, game concepts, designs, quality, localization and product. And I think a clear example of our initial steps towards this drive is today's release. It's called Teddy's Tavern, St. Patrick's Day. Um, it has quite a unique mechanic. Um, we've named the mechanic Digidrop, where all wins are multiplied. It's, it's, it's a very unique payout system or mechanic. So, you know, this is the first step in that direction. Would you mind telling us a little bit more about that mechanic? It's, it's quite unique, as I mentioned. So normally a game would have symbols and those symbols, a collection of those symbols uh, would pay out on a pay line. In this particular instance, the symbols are the win values. So the direct win values. So you have a zero and a blank symbol, which indicates a loss. Then you have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And one is one times your bet, two is two times your bet. But any combination of those numbers adjacent to one another, for example, a two zero would land up giving you a 20 times your bet immediately. It's very straightforward. It's very easy to understand. Um, it plays fast and pays really well, up to 10,900 times your bet. Uh, it's very simple. As I mentioned, it's got three reels. So literally super simple to understand. I mean, that's Have a look at our website. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, Wizard Games Studio, you know, it's, it's still relatively new, you know, only launched a couple of months back. Um, in your opinion, what would you say have been the key drivers of growth for the company? You know, um, the, the studio was very, very um, embedded within Parry Play's ecosystem. We still are, even though we are now Wizard Games. Um, uh, with within the Aspire global uh, ecosystem. And as a result of that, our close collaboration with Play and their commercial and compliance teams uh, essentially allows us to uh, leverage as many commercial opportunities as possible. Um, w with these uh, close collaborations, um, I think we've managed to gain market entry quite fast. 
Um, currently, our games, for example, are certified in 11 European markets, and there's a heavy focus on US and North America, of course. So we've, we've, we've kind of established ourselves quite well already with a very comfortable base um, as a result of our close collaborations with Periplay. We briefly touched upon how the last few months have been for you, but, you know, looking forward, what can we expect from Wizard Games in 2022? You know, uh, you've released Teddy's Tavern this morning. Have we got any new titles in the pipeline? We do. Teddy's is the first of uh, many uh, big releases for 2022. Um, As part of the Digi 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 Drop uh, series, uh, which is the mechanic I referred to earlier, Next month, uh, with two games released every month, next month we look forward to 12 Super Hot Diamonds, which is an old school collector expanding reels uh, theme, quite quite a, a twist on a classic theme. Then we have a, a mine theme game called Dead King, and then followed by uh, followed by uh, Blackjack. Um, the one that I'm really excited about for Q2 Q3 is called Dogwood Magic where we introduce another new um, mechanic within the wizard ecosystem or game selection. And we continue to build up from June onwards um, into you know Q3, Q4, etc. with more exciting games. But as I mentioned, two games a month. Um, it's something that we're quite heavily focused on and the content will continue to be more and more creative. I mean, that... that... That's a busy schedule, you know, two games a month. <laughs> well, others are doing five a month, right? Um, four or five a month. So we by no means want to to get to that level yet. Um, we focusing on creativity and quality um, as opposed to, you know, pump and dump, as, as it's commonly referred to in the industry. Um, right now, the the... The studio or our focus uh, is very much on quality and localization. Perfect. And something you briefly touched upon earlier is a couple of the different markets that, that you've been looking at. You know, what what are going to be the key focus markets for you over the next twelve months? We'd like to um, re-establish um, our position and obviously improve on them within all of the European markets. As mentioned, we are currently engaging with eleven European markets. Um, we'd like to expand our footprint within the US North American market. Um, Canada is doing really well for us at the moment. You might have heard the news about Neo Games. Um, we have really good partnerships within um, operator partners, uh, operators, customers, sorry. Um, within the US and Canada. So we would like to expand on those um, partnerships and leverage them as much as possible. Um, Some of the big ones, of course, Michigan, Pennsylvania, um, Ontario is coming up um, in April. So we really, really want to drive those markets as, as, as much as possible.